Grüezi, everyone. That means hello in Swiss German. I literally just learned that two minutes ago. It is day three here in Davos, and I've shown you a lot of the Congress Center, of course, because a lot happens there, but I'm going to take you on a little stroll down the promenade to see some of the storefronts uh, from companies and governments that are trying to court investors and policymakers. Come along, won't you? The Gritzy yet again, and before I do stroll down the promenade, I wanted to show you the media tents behind me. Uh, those are TV tents, actually. There are hundreds of members of the media from all around the world gathered here. Biggest representation from organizations, CNBC and the Wall Street Journal. Not surprising. It's actually turned out to be a beautiful day as I'm walking around. It's crisp, but the sun is shining and it has started to melt some of the ice underfoot so that I'm not going to break my butt taking you on this tour of the promenade. Looking to own a little piece of Davos paradise. Well, this is a real estate office and uh, there are some pied de terres available for a cool 1.75 million Swiss francs. It's about dollar nine US dollars to one Swiss franc, so that ain't cheap, kids. Sorry for the weird angle on this one, but I wanted you to see all of this building behind me. This was once known as Russia House in Davos uh, and Forum years gone by. Uh, it would be a kind of a central uh, staging place and meeting place for Russian oligarchs. Last Davos, or the one that was held in May this past spring, this became Russia War Crimes House, funded by a Ukrainian billionaire uh, to call out atrocities that were happening in Ukraine. This time around, it is one of three facilities that India has commandeered. India, the world's fifth largest economy with a bullet, rapidly, rapidly growing, uh, wants everyone to know that they are a viable and exciting uh, investment prospect and place to do business, and they are definitely sharing that message loud and proud. Sorry for all the weird angles, but I'm trying to let you see some of these buildings. So Polish House is right here, oops, behind me. And uh, Poland has now become home to an estimated 1.5 million Ukrainians who have settled there since the war began last February of 2022, of course. Uh, the message from the Polish government, we are a bridge to freedom a place uh, where East meets West for investment and business. There are also, luckily, some places for normal people to eat. There's this food truck alley here, sausage sandwiches, Greek food, people just sort of enjoying leisurely lunch in the sun. So as you can see there, you want a hero box. It's 23. Swiss francs, which comes out to about 25 US dollars. Here's Ukraine House, by the way, uh, funded by the Viktor Pinchuk Foundation. He is the billionaire I told you about who did Russia War Crimes House last May here uh, in Davos. I should say as a programming note, Ukrainian President Zelensky is speaking virtually to the forum at 5 p.m. today. I do love just walking around these streets because you hear a different language on every corner. There are people here from literally uh, 130 different countries. A couple of fun facts about Davos before I let you go. It is the highest point in Europe at 5,000 feet and you can see pretty beautiful. Ooh, there's one right there. And we found our way back through the snow. Uh, one last fun fact about Davos before I let you go. It was the location, the setting of Thomas Mann's 1924 novel, The Magic Mountain, uh, which largely takes place at a sanatorium, health spa, uh, which Davos was known for at the time because people believed that this enormous high altitude was actually very good for health. Uh, I don't know why, because it only just seems to make me very winded. Um, but anyway, uh, Auf Wiedersehen, that means goodbye, and I'll bring you more from Davos later.